What is going on, Outlaws? It's Kurt Stevens here again with Outlaw Bits Gaming, and today we're going to be going over all of the amazing pickups that I got in the month of January. So be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video because I've got some amazing stuff, guys, and you are not going to want to miss it. Now, if you like what you see here today, be sure to click the links below to like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell to stay up to date with all of Outlaw Bits videos as soon as they're posted. Well, without any further ado, guys, let's get right into it. Alrighty guys, let's go ahead and get started here. So, I got some amazing stuff in the month of January. Um, one of the most notable games that I got, I'm most excited about, is The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds for the 3DS. Now, as uh, most of you know, the lovely Laura got me these awesome Zelda 3DSs for Christmas that you can see behind me in the backdrop here. And um, I've really been wanting a new Zelda game to try to play on them, so I had to pick this guy up, and I've been having so much fun with it. I've been playing it a lot of my downtime, just chilling on the couch and whatnot. But yeah, it's a super good game. I was so happy to pick it up, and I'm one step closer to completing my Legend of Zelda collection. So, minty boys. Now, the next game that I got was one that I've been hunting down for a very long time, and I was super happy to find it. I actually got this at the uh, exchange on East Washington Street. And that is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic for the original Xbox. Now I got the Platinum Hits Edition here. I'm still wanting to track down the original copy. But uh, this is awesome, guys. We've got the disc. It actually came with the old mail-in stuff. It uh, looks like a mail-in survey. And I just, I love that. I think any game literature that comes in the cases is awesome. And I was super happy to find it. Now, the next game that I got was uh, one that I've been looking for for a long time, too, and I believe I got this the exact same day at the exchange, and that was Fable 2. Now, this marks all three games in the Fable catalog for me, guys. Uh, I was super happy to find it, and I, I can't wait to delve into it and play it again. If you guys aren't familiar with the Fable series, you definitely need to check them out because they are super fun. Now, um... Some of the next things that I got here, they came in a lot that I found off of uh, Facebook. So I traveled down to Columbus at what seems to be, it was probably like 12 or 1 o'clock or something. It was super late. But I stumbled upon an amazing deal and I picked up a lot of solid stuff. Now, um, first thing I'm going to show you here is this old Nintendo case. Now, it's not in the best condition, guys. The uh, handle... Here at the top has been removed, lost throughout the years, unfortunately. But uh, other than that, we just got a couple scrapes on the corners and whatnot. Pretty normal wear and tear. A little rust on the Nintendo, which I actually think is kind of cool. Um, it's just like the historicalness of it, you know what I'm saying? It's been around long enough to rust, so it's pretty neat. But that's not all. When uh, I open that sucker up... It was full of uh, NES games. I got a couple heavy hitters like Metal Gear. Now, uh, a lot of Metal Gear Solid fans are up in the air with this one because Hideo Kojima literally had nothing to do with it and they kind of did it uh, without his knowledge. So at the end of this game, you actually don't even ever fight Metal Gear. You fight like a supercomputer. They changed it in this one which is different than the M MSX-13. But yeah, I got that. Um, we found a Metroid in there. I was super excited about that, guys. I already had one in my collection, so um, I swapped out the better copy. But yeah, I'm sure you guys have played Metroid by now, and if not, you definitely need to. We have the old school Tetris, the OG, and uh, it's actually pretty interesting, guys. 
I have a convention coming up in May called the TORG Gaming Expo, and they are having a Tetris competition there to see um, who gets to represent the Midwest in the national championship for Tetris. So I thought that was pretty cool, and uh, I was super happy to have this. Got to get some practice in. I don't know if I'll win, but it's worth a shot. I found this very obscure game in there called Mystery Quest. And if you guys haven't played this, um, I suggest at least looking up a YouTube video on it. It's pretty out there, man. It's like a platformer, but uh, you run around and shoot lasers out of your hand. You're the guy on the cover here, and the art style is absolutely horrendous, but it's definitely worth popping in and getting a laugh with your friends. We have Top Gun here, solid, uh, solid movie game title. We have Track and Field 2, the, the sequel to Track and Field and Stadium Events, guys. This is uh, pretty awesome stuff, and it is power pad compatible. My friend Jeremiah and I had a great time playing it. The next game we have here is uh, Codename Viper. Now, I'm going to let you know, guys, the graphics on this game are actually stunning. This is one of the uh, better pixel art games that I've seen on the NES, and it's, it's a pretty difficult game, but other than that, it's got some innovative mechanics, and it was actually really neat. So uh, if you guys ever have time, check it out. One of the last ones we have in here is a sports title called Double Dribble. I'm sure you guys know what's up with that. It's a basketball game. <laughs> this was a funny title that I found in here as well. Uh, this is called Bump and Jump. <laughs> it's not really obscure. It's like a $3 game. But uh, I thought it was really cool that it had the Movie Time VCR Complete Center, like the label here. Like it was uh, at a movie store at one time for rent or something. So I thought that was super interesting. I like that. Some people hate uh, when there's stickers on games. I'm kind of impartial to it. Uh, I can see the pros and the cons of it, but it kind of adds to the history. You know what I'm saying? Some of those old Blockbuster stickers on those games, everybody hates them, but Blockbuster isn't around anymore either. So it's kind of neat to find those every once in a while, you know? But uh, as for those NES games, guys, that's about it. Now, I found uh, some Atari games in there as well. We've got Barnstorming here. It's a pretty noteworthy title. I looked up a video on it. It's pretty interesting. We've got Super Breakout for the Atari as well. We have Atlantis. Now, I'm not sure what this is about. I haven't looked up anything on it yet, but um, it's so basic on the cover. I don't really know if I'm going to take the time to. I think I'm going to sell all of these games, along with Oink here, at the up-and-coming um, TORG Expo that we're going to be attending. So, yeah. But I also got an entire stack of loose games here from the guy. There's a couple noteworthy titles in here, actually, and um, I actually got a bunch of game sleeves, and I'm planning on probably selling most of these at the convention as well. Um, a lot of them don't have boxes, and it was a funny thing. He actually told me that a lot of the games were complete in box, but when I got there, they were in, like, DVD and Blu-ray cases, so that was something. <laughs> but I actually... Got two Nesses in the same lot as well. Um, both of them work, which was astounding to me. Neither one of them need the uh, toaster repaired here, so that was great. I got one Super Nintendo in the lot, which it needs some cleaning, but that's okay, guys. We're going to go ahead and uh, scrub that up and probably sell it at the convention as well. So I'm super excited for but, yeah, that pretty much wraps it up for the lot, guys. Um, I paid, I 
think I paid $80 for it, so it wasn't too bad. I felt comfortable paying that for sure, especially since it came with two NESs and the Super Nintendo plus all the games. But yeah, it was a fantastic find and I was really happy to get it. Now, the last thing that I'm going to show you here is something that I am truly excited about. Um, I had been looking for a way to play the Fable games that I got in uh, December and uh, January and the Knights of the Old Republic as well, and I didn't have any means to do it. So I was hunting down an Xbox for a long time. So I ended up uh, finding an Xbox 360 so I could play those games and enjoy them again. But the kicker is on the Facebook Marketplace a couple days later, I found this awesome Gears of War Xbox 360 case. Now guys, this thing is sick. Um, I actually think that I saw this on a Metal Jesus Rocks video once and wasn't sure what it was. At the time I thought it was a special edition, but here's the kicker with this guys. Go ahead and sit that down. This cog on the side, when connected to a power source, which is usually the USB in the back of the Xbox, that sucker lights up. How cool is that, guys? I was so happy to find this. I actually found that on the uh, Facebook Marketplace as well from a really cool cat named Dustin. I was super happy to meet him. And uh, yeah. That was a really cool thing to add to the collection, and I got the Xbox, and then I found that thing, and it all just happened at once, and I felt like it was meant to be in a way. It was so awesome. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't help adding it to the collection. It actually came with the box as well, so that's really cool. But yeah, guys, that is the pickups that I got in the month of January. Now, I got some super solid stuff, and I was really happy to be able to come and share it with you guys today. Now, if you like what you saw here... Be sure to click the links below to like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell to stay up to date with all of Outlaw Bits videos as soon as they're posted. I can't thank you guys enough for watching, and this has been Kurt Stevens with Outlaw Bits Gaming, signing off. Yeah!